Hi everyone, this is Janet Simmons. In this video, we will examine recent trends in workplace learning. Jane Hart has created a wonderful graphic that looks at workplace learning trends over the last 20 years. Taking into account, this is from 2013. Note that the graphic pinpoints when these trends emerged. If you look near the middle, you'll see that simulations and gamification first emerged about 15 years ago. These two ways of learning are still not commonplace in workplace learning, but they continue to grow in popularity. We have examined many of these trends during this course, and as we found out, not all of them are accepted and embraced by organizations. This graphic depicts the state of workplace learning in 2014. There are numerous new training methods along with different delivery methods. The workplace learning trend leans towards learner autonomy, learning advisors, and learning guides. Hart clearly sees workplace learning moving steadily towards social and informal learning and appears to put the onus on learning on employees and not employers. This remains a growing trend even though the graphic is several years old. Hart says that in the modern workplace, learning is part scheduled part on demand, but largely a continuous process, and most learning happens outside courses as people go about their daily work. This type of learning is very different from the traditional learning that takes place through studying or training. But it is this learning that ensures our personal and professional, and indeed organizational, survival. It is also clear from other studies that the more autonomy individuals have when learning, the more value they place in those experiences. Therefore, learning in the modern workplace is both an organized and self-organized activity. Learning and development leaders and departments must still organize and manage some training activities in a fairly prescribed way. This provides the opportunity to create learning content and experiences in more flexible ways by offering on-demand access to courses and resources and enabling their use in ways that best suits individuals. Additionally, there is new opportunity to enable and support self-organized continuous learning and performance improvements of teams and individuals. Since 2007, Jane Hart has published a list of top tools for workplace learning. This graphic shows the 2016 list. The numbers in bracket shows the tools placed in the top 200 tools for learning. Which tools on this list are you familiar with? Which tools on this list are you proficient with? This list represents a small fraction of the tools available and the list continues to change each year, which means learning and development professionals must stay current with their technology use and also look into the future to see what tools will make learning better for learners and developers. Hart segments the tools into several groups, such as authoring tools and webinar platforms. This illustrates the choices available to learning and development professionals and organizations. Hart goes on to say there is increasing use of tools that speak to the needs for creating engaging and timely resources for learners while providing a degree of social support and contact. Hart notes that there are fewer free tools than in past years, except for where individuals have brought them into the workplace themselves. I encourage you to visit Jane Hart's website to read her insights into trending tools and how they affect workplace learning. Looking at trends from a broader perspective, D2L sees three trends, video learning, mobile learning, and visual learning assistance. Research shows that video learning, such as what you're currently watching on YouTube, will replace text documents as a learning form of digital content by the end of 2018. This may happen because people prefer learning by video and retention of video material is higher. Of course, this depends on how the instruction is designed. Research shows that the brain retains visuals for a longer period than just text, but how the visuals are presented and what the visuals are, are key. Smartphones and iPads are ubiquitous in our lives, so it's only natural that learners want to take their learning with them. This also speaks to having information at our fingertips, such as EPSS, which allows us to learn and access information when we need it. Virtual learning assistants are slowly becoming more widespread, and as technology quickly evolves, 
artificial intelligence, including machine learning and cognitive computing, will help employees engage through voice-activated searches and meet specific training needs that help them along their learning journey. Lifelong learning is a huge part of who we are and what we do. We learn each and every day, including when we are not in school or at work. But why does this and workplace learning matter in Canada? Demographics in Canada are changing. We are already facing labor and skill shortages, and these will continue and intensify. This will be augmented by fewer workers in the next few generations. Also, consider the pace that technology is changing and the demands of the global knowledge economy means that skill requirements are constantly changing. In fact, you may be hired one day for a job that doesn't exist today. Therefore, investing in skills and training pays off. Trends in workplace learning occur both in the tools and in the andragogical approaches facilitators take. Sometimes the tools affect the approach, but often a facilitator will adopt a tool from another industry or sector and repurpose it to meet the facilitation goals. As we have just learned, the quick evolution of technology, changing facilitation skills, and demographics all affect trends in workplace learning. There are additional factors to consider, such as financial and human resources, but it's likely that employees will continue to influence how organizations change and react to trends that shape workplace learning. Thanks for watching.